What's up, everybody? This is Alex from WMD back at you again. This time we're going to talk about Metron. Super exciting, super rad, really stoked to show you what this thing's all about. So yeah, this is part one in a multifaceted, multi-part series about Metron. Instead of making like a two-hour long video of how this thing works and just really like making you dive through everything, I'm going to really try and make it simple and make lots of little short videos. So you can just watch the video that you need to watch to help you with the you know, subject that you're looking for. So in this video, we're going to go over what Metron is and basic sequencing, how to make a sequence. That's it. So first thing first, Metron is a 16 track trigger and gate sequencer. So it admits triggers and gates for your Eurorack system. It has 16 channels across the top. We call them tracks, 16 tracks. And these are your outputs. So these are your trigger and gate outputs. Right here, we've got a clock input, a clock output, a reset input, and a dedicated reset output. Another thing we have is these two assignable inputs. Those will go over in their entire, like in a video of their own. So that'll be super cool when we get there. But just to start, what we're going to do is sequence. We're just going to do some super simple sequencing. So when you get your Metron, first thing you're going to need to do is take it out of the box, out of the bubble pack, plug it in and mount it to your rail. So you just uh, red stripe to the negative 12 indicator. And uh, that's pretty much all you need to know. By default, Metron's clock source is set to expect an external clock from the clock input. I'm using a pretty small 6U system, so I don't have an external clock. I'm just going to be using the internal clock from Metron. So first things first, what we're going to need to do is switch the clock source from external to internal. There's two ways we can do that. You can press global, and as you can see, the first selection right here in the counter is saying clock source. So we can use encoder 1 to switch to internal, exit global, and now you see the cursor. Another way you can quickly change the clock source is just by holding tempo and pressing down on encoder 1. So that allows you to just quickly start and stop the clock or quickly just change from an external to internal if that's something you needed to do in the middle of a performance or something. When you are on the internal clock, if you want to change the tempo, we just hold this tempo button here and we change encoder 1. We turn encoder 1. So I'm going to check, I'm just going to pick 120 because that's a nice simple uh, default BPM. And then if we want to add shuffle, we can just hold tempo again and change the, or turn this second encoder, encoder two. As you can see, we go from 50 all the way to 80, so we can go to a ton of swing. So again, I'm just going to go to the default 50. That's super easy. If you're in swing and you've got 65 or whatever, you've got lots of swing and you want to change back, you can just hold tempo and press encoder two, and that'll move you back all the way to 50. So that'll just, that's a really quick way to just go back to no swing or no shuffle. So let's make a sequence. As you can tell, I've already got a bunch of things plugged in here. It's a really simple patch. So I'm just going to explain it as I create the sequence. So you can see here that on the matrix of buttons, we've got these black outlines. These are to represent quarter notes. So just real simple. I'll make a four on the floor kick. And then my hi-hat is channel three and four. So I'll do closed hi-hats and I'll do my open. As you can tell, I've skipped channel two. The reason I did that is because I like to think in pairs and groups and four and groups of four. And so I don't have like a second kick drum in this system. So I just decided to say for my mind's sake, I'll skip channel two and do three and four because that just makes a little bit more sense to my head for where my hi-hats go. Then you can see here the track group selection. I can see four tracks at a time. So I'm going to go to tracks five through eight now. And this is my Camara. So I can change the accent input, which is number six, channel six. Channel five is this, the uh, trigger input. And then I've got the accents here on channel six. Channel seven is going to be my fracture. So that's there's my two and four. And then channel eight is the tick input on Fracture, so I can add a little bit more pitter patter. So as you can tell, I just made a quick sequence, took me about 30 seconds, and we're already rolling. Nine through 12, I have blank, because I really wanted to separate my drums from my melody. So 13 and 14, 
is actually going to be my architect here. So my architect, I've got 13, channel 13 is going into the step input. So now you can hear that I've just got a really simple sequence on the architect and it's just running through these two notes. And so I can add some reset with uh, channel 14. So that's a really fun way to make melodic sequencing with just an architect and a couple of voice modules. So now we can change up the rhythm a little bit. And there we go. We've got drums, we've got melody, and it's super simple. So that's just a super fast way to make sequences. So one thing about Metron is that it is a trigger and gate sequencer. It does not do CV. So it needs something like an architect or an external sequencer to do parameter sequencing. I have the architect here that's running my baseline, and I also have a Moleco voltage block. And so real quick, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take channel 16, and I'm gonna run that into the clock input on my voltage block. So you can see that there. I'm going to go to channel 16, and I'm just going to say on every quarter note, change. And I've got a four channel sequence programmed into voltage block. And I've got an output running into the input of architect, which is just changing that starting note, basically. So that's adding a little bit of variation. We can come through here and we can say, why don't we just change every, um, change every bar instead? So I can go through here, change my steps. So now every bar we're getting a new selection on Architect from Voltage Block. So this is a really effective way to sequence and to use external sequencers with your Metron to create something super unique and really fun really quickly. So this is where I recommend starting and just really getting the hang of this basic mode. We're calling this Compose Mode. So if you end up in any of these other modes, usually you can exit those modes just by hitting their button again, but you can also always hit this Compose button. If you hit the Compose button, that takes you back to the main Compose Mode at all times. So that's a really easy way to just get back to this main mode of sequencing. So yeah, just get the hang of this and then we'll move on to the next video. Thanks for watching.